I mean, I, we built a multi-million dollar business and never ranked high on the billboard charts. Like, that's not what I know about. Major labels sometimes game the system. I don't know if this was the case, and I didn't spend, an, I didn't spend a fraction of my time trying to figure out if Justin Bieber and Ariana Grande really outsold um, Takashi this week. It says it. It says we're live. What's going down? It's DJ Payne. One. This is the Music Entrepreneur Club podcast, episode number forty-eight, I believe. Uh, Dame looks like he's he's about to hit the gym. Um, I look like I'm about to be forty-eight. Shit. Feel like I'm aging in this quarantine. Uh, why? Because you just haven't gone to the barber. Yeah, I just just feel just feel restricted. You know, even though I'm still working out, you know, it's not the same as like hooping. Um, I did just buy a treadmill, but it won't be here for like another week. That'll be, that'll probably make me feel a lot better. I mean, I've still been running around the house sometimes, but I don't know. Just feeling the feelings of restriction, um, you know, and just letting the beer go probably. probably. Yeah, that that part is killing me. The the running part, the treadmill part, because if it's if it's a rainy day, I can't run. And then, um, not that I like running, it's just something I do so I don't get fat, but. Uh, I don't know, man. Craigslist is is really uh, full of a lot of a lot of idiots. So trying to get a treadmill on there is like pulling teeth. I had some people that seriously, they they told me um, that that they wanted to sell me their treadmill because they obviously posted a listing, and they asked me what date I could pick it up. They even said they would deliver it for an extra ten dollars. I said, oh, this is great. And they said, hey, we're going on vacation. Uh, we'll we'll contact you again in five days. So a week later, they contact me. Go, oh, one of our friends paid us more for it. Sorry. Hope best of luck. Yeah. I'm like, I think I feel I, like like you really should get cussed out right now. And I wish you had given me an address because I could just show up to your house and cuss you out for you. Because it seems to me that no one's ever performed that service for you because you're acting like an asshole. So, yeah. um. Maybe, maybe I'm going to be doing you a favor. I feel like Craigslist is a microcosm of the music industry. Um, so there's a lot of a lot of weirdos on Craigslist, um, a lot of bad business on Craigslist, um, and it's similar to the music industry. That's 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 a pretty good analogy, I think. It honestly is, and I don't want to talk too much about this because this is a topic that really kind of doesn't go anywhere, but. <laughs> you know, to, to be a retailer, right, to be, to, to be a, a professional retailer, to sell things as your, as your job, right, as your livelihood, you need to know how to do that. You need to know the, the, how to structure a business. You know, you need to incorporate, you need to account, pay taxes, all that stuff, know about sales tax. There's a lot to it. Craigslist, you just sell whatever. It doesn't matter who you are. You could be a, a two-year-old selling a, a rattle that you don't use anymore. So that kind of is how it is in the music business. Because yes, the music business is a business with rules, with um, best practices, with this very convoluted, complicated, and complex uh, system or multiple systems, really. Systems of royalties, the accounting systems that differ between label um, every label is like its own universe. There, every um, online platform is like its own universe. There are just so many different ins and outs that really take years of experience to learn in the right kind of mindset. And anyone can just jump into the music business and, and say, hey, I want to do this as a living. And there they are. And so I think more than anything, because we get so caught up in how complicated the system is um well on the one hand a lot of us are getting caught up on how complicated the system is and, and our heads are spinning i would say the majority of people jumping into the music business whether they're producers rappers managers whoever they just ignore all of it they don't care they just jump in and say okay i'm doing this let's 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 make a million dollars and to me Lately, and I've been telling you this for a couple of weeks. I don't know if I don't think you agree with me yet. I think I think it has to get really bad for you to agree with me. But I feel like 
I'm not a conspiracy guy, but maybe a symptom of coronavirus is the loss of common sense in mass. I don't know. It just seems like common sense is, it, it was bad a year ago, but now it's just like the, the, the stuff I'm seeing now is crazy. I mean, it, just in the last 24 hours from people saying, hey, do you manage artists? Or, hey, I want you to sign me to, hey, does BeatStars sign rappers? To people just making up their own facts about how a PRO operates. It's, it's just, it's like. Well, BeatStars does sign, but BeatStars does sign rappers though. Like, I don't know if that's something that, that that you push back on beat stars does sign rappers um, oh they do yeah <laughs> that cat oh. the, the cat that they've been promoting and i think his name is rude boy he signed the beat star beat, beat stars records um so that oh they, yeah they've, they've had that for a while but my thing is like why are you asking me that question just go on on the beat stars page and and contact right. them but um yeah it, it's just it's like I don't, I don't feel it's any, I really don't feel like it's any different. Um, you know, I've been dealing with, with shenanigans my, my whole internet life. Um, so I, I mean, it's always people that, that talk crazy, don't know what they're doing. But the Craigslist, the Craigslist analogy that we just put together, I think it's perfect. I think it's a perfect, I think it's a perfect microcosm of the music industry. Um, you know, because you have some legit businesses on the Craigslist platform like that are actually using Craigslist in a pretty structured like way to get a lot of business. And then you have people that are, you know, scamming, don't know what they're doing. Customer service is terrible because they're not looking to be long-term sellers on Craigslist. They're just trying to get, you know, the desk that they don't use off or they're trying to, you know, scam somebody with some fake Los Angeles Dodgers tickets or something. Um, Oh yeah, there's a there's a whole scam thing, and that's that's happening left and right in the music that, business. That, that happens a lot on, on Craigslist, uh, but, but 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 then that's common sense too, because the the fact that the, in the music business the scams are so terrible. I mean, when you get an email that's like three sentences long, and every other word is misspelled, and it's from a Yahoo account, and they're saying, you know, yo, we're from Def Jam, they don't even spell Def Jam correctly, and they're asking for $500 to, to, for a plane ticket so they can fly you out and sign you and turn you into the next Jay-Z. And, and, and you're getting this email after putting out two singles in the last three years that netted a total of 100 Spotify streams. There's something terribly wrong with your common sense for you to not know that that's a scam. And so I, I just, the way I look at it is, Common sense in the music business is very straightforward. It's it shouldn't be, or it should be straightforward. It shouldn't be this emotional attachment. It's like either you know how to collect your royalties or you don't. And if you don't know, you research and find out. It's not like political affi- affiliation where it's subjective. You know what I mean? Like we can argue all day about politics and the nuances of of somebody's political philosophies like i might think it's absolutely stupid and hypocritical to to believe in free market capitalism and then uh sit around waiting for the stimulus check i think that's hypocritical but that's a little higher level because it's challenging a somewhat deeper notion of economics and personal consistency whereas a black and white situation where either you're getting paid your royalties because you registered the song correctly or you're not because you didn't, there's not really room for, for debate there. Either you've registered your title properly with a PR or you didn't. So why are, why is this getting all, you know, well, that's not, no, that's your opinion. Um, I register my songs through uh, <laughs> copyright. Like, ah, oh. All right. Yeah, I think you just I think you just got to get out of the weeds. Like I I'll entertain folks if it's entertaining for me. And then once it stops being entertaining for me, I just give them the thumbs up emoji and a bounce. That's how you just got to That's how you got to treat just, just 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 don't go back and forth with these people, man. If they don't get it, then they don't get it. That's No, I don't, I don't go back and forth with people. It's just, I mean, sometimes I do, but not with this kind of thing. It's just it's what I'm seeing. I mean, people see once or twice a week, the 
back and forth I have. They don't see the thousands of messages that I just completely disregard. And I see a lot of your back and forth on Twitter. There's a lot of back and forth or you, you know, just trolling people. Um, you know, if it, I, I troll you. Fun, Who else do I troll? When it stops being fun, man, just get out. Just get out. You know, I, I definitely, I, we should have enough experience by, by, by now to know like, oh, okay, this one's not going to, this one's not going to be fun. This one's not going to end well, or it's not going to end you know, until I, until I stop. Um, so, you know, if, if people are respectful or really asking like a question, you know, I, I t- I'll respond. But if, you know, if people are being stupid, then I don't. Um, but wait a minute, Dame, didn't someone recently comment on an Instagram post saying we didn't know what we were talking about? What, what did they say? And then you responded and. No, I, yeah. And I gave him a thumbs up emoji. I, I gave him a thumbs up emoji and I screenshot and I sent it to you and you took over. <laughs> so it's a, it's a perfect example of what I'm talking about. Um, so for the people that don't know what we're talking about, there was a, I forget what was the, I don't even remember the topic, but the person basically just accused us of, of not, of, of us being surface level. Um, and this person had like 250 followers Um you know, and, and it's fine. Like some of the stuff that we cover is surface level, but some people need to hear surface level because that's where they're at, you know, and we definitely go deeper in a lot of different topics for sure. And maybe he just wasn't paying attention or maybe he just doesn't join our live sessions or, or, or maybe it's not useful for him. That's okay. I mean, if you decide that, that what we're talking about or what we do is not useful, um, why are you following our page in the first place? Like don't follow don't follow things that aren't useful for you because you're, it's, it's going to take up, even if it's a second of your time and you're, and as you're scrolling your feed, it's going to take up your time. So you have to treat your feed in a healthy way. Like what do you want to consume? I go through and unfollow people all the time that aren't adding any value, right? Like if you're not educating me, if you're not entertaining me, if you're not funny, um, if, if, if you're not adding some type of value, then I, I'm unfollowing people all the time. I think people should do the same, um, with their feed because as you're scrolling, you're taking in information in bits and pieces. And if it's not healthy for you, then don't take it in. Like, don't, don't follow us. I'm not offended by it at all. I don't want anybody following us to think that we don't add, add any value. Um, and I know I just took that to a place that it probably didn't need to go, but I think, I, I think everybody should be managing their feed um, in a healthy way and unfollowing people all the time that aren't bringing, because I have to, like, sometimes people uh, start posting fights and stuff like that. I don't follow those people. Like, I don't want to see that shit. I don't, I don't want to see, you know, just random fights and, and, and stupid. I'm all for like funny, thoughtful pranks and things like that. But if it's just, you know, if it's just negative and violent, then I'm, I'm cool. I'm out. Um, so, so yeah. But, well, um, speaking of negative and violent, I know, I know you really wanted to talk about this Takashi situation. Yeah, I, I want to talk about why we don't. I want to talk about why we don't talk about Takashi on this on this platform. While we obviously have to talk about Takashi and, and break the rule. Um, okay, but before you start, can we just both agree that the Apple metaphor in his Billboard video was probably <laughs> one of the funniest things that the internet has ever seen it it was it was it was kind of funny um i was really impressed up to that point i was like wow takashi's being really eloquent he's he's very well spoken suddenly he's explaining how you know how he believes billboard is is uh embellishing the numbers and then let's say i'm looking at an apple right and i'm looking at this apple saying you read but Billboard saying that you not read. <laughs> so boom. I Man. just lost it there. That Man, was it. Got the perfect Takashi reenactment. Um yeah, that was that was quite stupid. Um you know, but the, I loved it though. That was that's the that's <laughs> probably my favorite Takashi moment. But the reason the reason that you know, I don't address to, and, and pain, I, me and pain, we're allowed to do whatever we want, but because we, we work together, we have a similar thought. We have similar thoughts a lot of the time and we definitely disagree, but we have similar thoughts a lot of the time. And my thing is, is like, you know, Takashi's 
playing a dangerous game that we would never, ever teach or suggest to anybody that followed the Music Entrepreneur Club and being so controversial, um, getting involved with, you know, with, with folks that, you know, could be a danger to his career, being a part of a lifestyle that could be a danger to his career. Um, you know, I guess there's high risk, high reward if you consider, you know, what he's, what he's experiencing now a reward. I mean, sure, he has money, but he has to change houses like every other day. You know, he has hella people that hate him. Um, you know, sure, that gets a lot of attention. You know, that's going to bring him some financial success. But like, who does he have around him? Does he have, you know, a comfortable team that he that he trusts and, and respects and appreciates? Probably not. You know, so now he's going to be. And I don't think this is going to last very long, too. I think a lot of people just are like they're just impressed but well, I don't even know if impressed is the right word they're just they're just shocked by him that he's been able to do what he's been able to do I don't think it's really like a love for his music um and I don't I don't know how long this run is gonna gonna last you know I would think that you know okay people were interested in what he had to say because of everything he's done and gone through over the past couple of years he goes on IG and gets like 2 million people watching him because people want to know what he has to say. Um, but it's like, is that going to keep, are people going to keep wanting to know what he has to say? Like if he, if he has another analogy of a watermelon instead of an apple, like you, you see that he's not that deep or thoughtful. I would tune in for the watermelon analogy. <laughs> you see that he's not that deep or thoughtful. Um, so none of what he's doing is what, so it's two things. None of what he's doing is what we would ever suggest to artists. So that's why we don't use him much as an example or, or talk about him. You know, he's playing a very dangerous game. Um, and like when he's talking about billboards and stuff like that, like our, our audience shouldn't be concerned with what billboard is doing right now. Right. Like we're not. We don't, I personally don't, I mean, I, we built a multi-million dollar business and never ranked high on the billboard charts. Like that's, that's not what, that's not what I know about, you know, and I definitely know that, that major labels sometimes game the system, right? I, I know that, like, I know that, they, you know, sometimes I don't know if this was the case and I didn't spend an, I didn't spend a fraction of my time trying to figure out if Justin Bieber and Ariana Grande really outsold um, Takashi this week. I don't get, I don't care. Um, you know, but that's not where our energy should be. And that's not where I want our community's energy to be uh, worrying about billboard and things like that. Uh, Cause if you get to a point where, where billboard is a real thing for you, then, you know, you've achieved a certain amount of success and, you know, whereas most of the people that listen and, and rock with us are just worried about getting fan one and turning one into two and two into four, four into eight and, and, and building like a solid foundation of like real fans, real engagement um, and just a solid business. It's totally different than the game Takashi's playing. And that's why I don't entertain it. It is interesting though. Cause when I think about, making music at that level at the level of charting on the top 200 you know as, as a millionaire multi-millionaire musician when you're at that point do you suddenly have a different set of goals are you suddenly more focused on the accolades such as the grammys or billboard or you know what whatever accolade you can name just just because you've already kind of done everything else you've proven yourself artistically you've proven that you're viable you have your fan base so now you just have to focus on competing with the people around you and what are the people around you competing for billboard positions grammys you know and and, and knowing that it's it's this it's this paradox of of knowing that the game is kind of rigged. I mean, we don't have any definitive proof about the Grammys, but there were those accusations recently about them being rigged and um, the gender discrimination and all that. It was just a very convoluted story. And, and you have to reconcile that with still wanting to win that Grammy because 
of some kind of personal victory that that brings. Yeah, I mean, there definitely might be some some pressure. And if you feel like you've done everything, I guess it's, it just comes down to, you know, the individual and the team or maybe some pressure that the label's putting on you um, because these because winning a Grammy does come with uh, a lot of positive benefits. It definitely kind of takes things to another level for that project or just you as an artist, um, you know. But I, I, but I also, you know, have heard of artists that, you know, are just comfortable. They're not really, you know, if they get a Grammy, obviously that it's, it's appreciated, uh, but they're comfortable where they are. They're comfortable with their fans and the business that they've built and whether they win a Grammy or not, uh, they're going to have a successful, you know, happy career. Um, and that, that's what I feel like, you know, the mindset should be, if you want to win a Grammy, I'm not, that's not a knock, but it's like, you know, do you need, another organization's validation that your music is good like is your is your fan base not enough like is your fans telling you that your music is is wonderful and it's changing their life not enough um and i'm not saying you know how you should feel but if i was an artist i feel like you know yeah we would want a grammy we want to be celebrated by you know we want those achievements but i would be perfectly happy with just knowing that you know, getting the feedback from the fans and having the fans support me over decades. Um, you know, there's a lot of, there's a lot of really dope artists that have never gotten a Grammy. Um, there's a lot of legendary artists that have never gotten a Grammy. Um, so, but to me, that's just, in terms of the Music Entrepreneur Club, like that's just so far out from where folks should be thinking. I mean, maybe have it on your life vision board but it's like, what do you need to do t- today to get to that level at some point, right? Like, what do you need to do today to get to earn a new fan? Um, and that's what we're more focused on. And and that's why I don't, I, I mean, outside of him just being annoying, I mean, he's kind of funny sometimes, like you mentioned. Um, but That was I, unintentional. I don't think he meant the Apple thing to be a joke. I don't think he means anything to make to be a joke, but I – he's like it's just what he's doing is 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 just sometimes it's funny um but it's to me it's nothing other than that like I don't listen to his music I don't really I don't respect him you know I don't respect how he's moving um you know it's just it's just he just moves in a very dangerous way and and eventually you know he might have gotten a pass this time but but something's gonna catch up with him that's not positive and you know, it's gonna be all bad. He, cause I, I like this album actually a lot. What was crazy is like, like you would think that you know, going through something like that, you kind of di- dial it back a little bit. Okay, you know, whew, I got through that. I, I don't know how I got through that, but um, you know, I'm, I'm gonna dial it back. He went on IG and turned it up. Like he turned <laughs> he, he he turned it all the way back up. Um, so it is. He's he's an entertaining cat, but like I said, I don't I don't know how long, you know this this can go, because um, the music all sounds the same to me every time I like the song he just put out. What's the difference between that and anything else I've heard? Essentially, you know, maybe from him or from any other artist. From him, like I, all his yeah, from him. But you know, artists kind of aren't known for dropping two songs that both sound entirely different from one another you know who who it's funny too because drake does that and i think that's weird it it's it's strange that drake is so successful dropping three songs on the same day one could be a dance hall record one could be a uk drill record and the other one could be you know like a golden era sounding hip-hop track and all three of them are breaking the damn internet um, I don't, most artists can't do that at all. I mean, if, if all of a sudden Jay-Z did a dance hall record tomorrow, I don't think people would respond well to it. So Drake is, is one of those artists that's in a very unique position and kind of the exception to, to almost every rule. So, um, but, but bring, bringing it back so we don't keep talking about Takashi, um, the, the whole focus on these accolades before having the foundation as an artist, I, th- I think on a, on a smaller scale, 
the equivalent to a Grammy to to a brand new artist is a verification check on Instagram or a verified badge on Twitter. I mean, I, I can't tell you how many artists just reach out to me and say, hey, man, how did you get that verified badge? And I'm sitting there like, how do you think I got the verification badge? Because I was like, I, I want one too. How did you get it? I'm like, well, you have 50 followers and no sort of career. I mean, I can't tell you how I got it. Um, I can tell you how I think I got it based on conversations I've had with, with, with Mike Trampy and his, his opinion was that having a Wikipedia page with, you know, cause they have pretty strict guidelines as far as citations go. So if you have a Wikipedia page that has citations from, um, I guess more mainstream publications, then that helps verify your identity and it helps push these, these, pla- these social media platforms to actually complete the verification process for you. But to, to to speak to your point, name, you know, should it should an unsigned artist be worrying about winning a Grammy? No. Should an artist who hasn't really done anything with their career in the sense of making a widespread impact be worried about getting a verification badge? No. But it's these kind of artificial accolades that we covet because we we believe that that's validation. But it's always premature. I mean. There are celebrities, again, just like you said, there are legends in the music game that that have never won Grammys. There are legends and celebrities and so forth who who don't have verified Instagram pages. Um, I I, I think if if that's the focus, rather than making good music rather than making an impact rather than affecting people's lives with the with the art that you're making, that's that's something that does not speak well for for your future as a as an artist yeah like if you're if you're caught up with like how to how to win a Grammy um, how to get on billboard and you still don't know what a PRO is you still don't know how to collect money when you release a song you still don't know how to you know set up a website properly you still don't know how to do merch properly like all these other things like if you don't know these things and you're st- and you're so interested in how to get a grammy like obviously you know your your head is not in the right place right in terms of yeah. building a solid foundation because that's 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 crazy like just you know again have it on your long term vision board but you're not winning a grammy this year you're not winning a grammy next year like you need to work on like being a full-time artist and quitting your job at the store. Like that's, that should be the focus, not a Grammy, not billboard, you know, don't waste time with Takashi. Don't care about, you know, labels, gaming the system. Um, That's not the game you're playing right now. I agree. That's, I think that should be motivation enough. I, I, I I think minimizing all kinds of distractions. I mean, if this is really what you want to do, this is really what you want to do. It, it, I, another another analogy would be college, right? You just want to get through college. You're paying tuition. You want to get your degree so you can enter the next chapter of your life and pursue whatever career you're passionate about pursuing and make a livelihood and, and build a life for yourself. Um, minimizing distractions in college is also something that I think most people try to do, you know, and if they don't, they end up failing. They end up wasting money. They end up extending their, 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 uh, stay at college. They, they might end up doing five, six years on a bachelor's degree because they're drinking too damn much, chasing dick, chasing women, ch- you know, whatever it is that they're chasing that isn't going to help them achieve their goal. <laughs> um, then it's like, well, that happens in the music business. A lot of people are chasing something big. They they made they made one song this year, and all they want to do is get like. I, and producers, especially in the producer community, you see that you know someone makes five beats, and it's like I got to get these placed. I got to just keep making beats, keep making better music. There are a million ways to do this, right? Um, and if you have this singular goal that is really an endpoint for even the most talented artist careers, like the Grammy or the placement or you know whatever it is and you have you know that's 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 point w and you're at point a at very least if you want to skip a steps you know skip b and get to c don't skip 
you know, like 20 you some skip, odd letters. You can't skip any steps. Like, I don't feel like you can skip any steps um, or just weaken. It just weakens your foundation. Um, but anyway, man, let, let's wrap this up. I did want to quickly uh, promote the, the MEC workshops that we're starting. So we're starting kind of a different format. Uh, for, we're still having our, our Monday and Tuesday night sessions, but this week and for the next four Fridays going forward, um, I have a workshop called Developing Your Content Strategy. Uh, priority was given to our MEC members, but I've since opened it up. I've, I sent the, the link out to our text marketing list. And I, I think most of the slots are taken at this point. Um, I think I'll post it on Instagram today if there, if there is any remaining slots. But essentially, these are you know limited to 15 people a session. And what we're going to go through during these workshops is something tangible, like something that you can leave with. So in terms of developing a, a content strategy, I want to talk with artists about like what types of content they should be creating to engage and grow their audience, you know, how often they should create it, um, and what platforms and how they should post on, on the different platforms. So we're going to speak to every, and it's the, the group is so small because I want to talk to everybody's brand specifically. And I want to have the entire group brainstorm and give ideas, not just me. Um, so everybody should leave with a strategy. Everybody should leave with, you know, some confidence or just a plan of what, what they're going to do going forward to try to engage folks on social media. So we'll, we're going to try this format um, and I know, I know Payne might try it as well with, with producers. And if it works out, you know, we'll continue to do something like this if people find it to be a positive and valuable experience. So, you know, just like artists are always, you know, you guys always have to kind of uh, try new things and evolve your business. You know, so do we. So this is be another experience that we'll, we'll try, especially since we weren't able to do the MEC tour. Uh, or it doesn't look like we'll be to be able to do the MEC tour this year. So uh, we might do a drive-in MEC tour. <laughs> yeah, I don't know about that, but I am looking forward to to potentially some drive-in. I'd go to a drive-in concert. Like I, I like I said last week, man, I loved the drive-in when I was little. That was like one of my favorite things to do. And the fact we don't have any more drive-ins, I heard they're coming back. Um, some of them are, are reopening. Um, but so I'm looking forward to going to the drive in that, that, that used to be, that, that was probably like top five things for me to do when I was a child. Cause we didn't get to go that often, but when we did, you know, I feel like we had a good time. Wait, what, what city was this again? I'm in LA. They had drive-ins in LA. Yeah. Remember the scene of poetic justice? Oh, I don't know. Was it poetic justice? Yeah. Where, I get, yeah. Where the homie got shot in the beginning. That makes sense. Cause you're weather there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I guess it's more surprising that we even have one in Wisconsin because of the way our climate is out here. All right, cool. Yeah, drive-ins coming back. Dame nostalgia to Takashi Six Nine. Another episode down. Uh, we'll catch you on the next one. MusicEntrepreneurClub dot com. Use code MEC Podcast to sign up for free. We hope to see you at one of our live sessions. Peace. Peace.